YouTube, welcome back. Welcome back, guys. We got more Theo Vaughn, and that's always a good thing. Yes. Well, not always, because <laughs> I think Theo Vaughn had to grow on us a little bit. He was a little out there to begin yeah. with. I think we just didn't really know what to expect. Exactly. And you have to get used to like his personality. Yeah. But we've done a few videos now, and we, we think he's hilarious. So yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to come back. You never know what to expect. That's the thing, right? And we've said in previous videos that we never know if he's telling a story in a truthful way. Yeah. Or if he's, or if just he's making it up as he goes. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know where we're going to go with this one. We got me and Daryl Strawberry. This is not happening. Um, you don't know who Daryl Strawberry is, right? No. So uh, he's a baseball player. Um, that's okay. uh, basically all I know. Uh, he was a baseball player. I think he played for the Yankees. And I also remember him being a part of the Simpsons cartoons. Oh, okay. Um, they featured him and made fun of him in a few episodes. So when we, I was growing up, I remember him being on there. But in okay. terms of playing baseball, he was before my time. Like, I'm not a big baseball guy. So it was guy. a while ago, like a long time ago. Yeah, but I'm not a big baseball guy, as you know. Yeah, but, I don't um, really like it either. You know, I, I know the players that played when I was growing up, right? Yeah. When I was a teenager and stuff. You hear, like, the popular yeah. players that everybody talks about. But I think he, his career was coming to an end basically you know when i started to grow up so okay. um that's what i know about daryl strawberry but we got theo and Dar daryl strawberry i have no this idea. is not happening yeah i've heard uncensored I, I think i've heard from the stories about daryl strawberry is that he liked to party drugs alcohol all that kind of stuff so maybe okay, so we're gonna, right in with theo Vaughn. <laughs> maybe that's where we're gonna get into with him he's gonna tell a story about him all being right. with daryl Stra strawberry in that light anyways let's not prolong this any further let's get into some theo Vaughn. This is not happening. Let's do it. This may get dirty. So he starts saying, I got a gift for you. I got a gift. And I grew up in like a broken neighborhood. You know, I thought it was going to be his cock, you know? <laughs> so I start practicing my like, see a cock, like don't be interested faces. You know? <laughs> Welcome to This Is Not Happening. I'm your host, Roy Wood Jr. Hey, there you go, boys, drink up. Nobody's gonna remember what the hell's happening tonight. That dude's trying to get my couch pregnant. He peeing out the window. Dude, come on, man, John Legend bought me that piano. What is this? Who brought a ball pit? This past weekend, a southern boy like me, Theo Vaughn. So, I am 11 months sober, right? I'm a sober guy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I didn't want to be, but this is what happened. I was in New York City, right? New York City, New York. They call it the same thing right back in front of each other just to really piss you off before you get there. It's like we heard you in the beginning, you know? But I was in New York City, uh, east of Hoboken. Didn't and get I that one. I planned on doing any cocaine, okay? I planned on doing this much cocaine. That's a zero amount, you know? But apparently some cocaine had planned on getting together with me when it left its home that evening. <laughs> so I went to this party, man, and my friends were at this party, and, uh, and I felt uncomfortable when I got to this party. Probably because, like, when I really think back on my life, like, I've always just felt uncomfortable, you know? Like, I don't know what it is. Like, my whole life has just been this constant struggle with every moment, like I'm just wrestling with every second just to feel okay. Like I don't even want to feel good. Just set me in the middle, you know? So I'm at this party and I'm feeling how I feel regularly, uncomfortable. Uh, so I decided to have some drinks because my friends are alcoholics and I'm competitive. <laughs> so I have a couple tequilas, right? 
And tequila, let's be honest, like pouring Mexico right into your body, okay? I mean, make you jump a fence, make you buy a gun, make you run across a highway with your family, make you knock a woman up, make you knock a woman down, okay? <laughs> Ole, Janet, you know? Ole, so Janet. So I had me a couple tequilas, and, uh, and I was feeling alive, you know? I was feeling a little more comfortable. Now, at 1.30 in the morning, I left, this, uh, I left this party because at 6.30 a.m., I had to be on the nationally syndicated radio program, the Opie and Jim Norton radio show. And, uh, it's a, yeah, it's a wonderful show that tapes there in New York City, New York. And, <laughs> and those are two men that I really admire, you know? And admire is when somebody's better than you, but you still like them. <laughs> It's an old-fashioned idea. Doesn't this look like a strip club to you? With all these, like, poles and yeah. stuff? Yeah, There's it kind of does. poles and platforms. Yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> I wouldn't, wouldn't put past Theo to do a comedy special in a <laughs> strip club. I'm doing my special <laughs> in a strip club. <laughs> I wonder if he's still sober to this day as well, because he's. I think this is from a few years ago at the very okay. least. Yeah. Um, I think it's... I thought it was from, like, 2019 or something like that. But, yeah. Because um, he's made jokes... Um, previously about how he had done drugs prior mm-hmm. or had party nights prior. Yep. Like the one where the blender was going forever. Yeah. And he was with Joe Rogan out. when he was talking yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if he's sober or not still. If you guys know, maybe you can drop it down, down yeah. in the comments there. I'm also like kind of laughing because I remember it's like, I don't, I'm assuming it's from this, but like people were making memes of things saying, Ole Janet. <laughs> <laughs> And I never I've knew never what, what, what it was from. I've never seen it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll usually I'm it. the one that's seen all the memes. Yeah, I'll have so. to find it. <laughs> so at 1.30 a.m., I get into this taxi cab, right? This beautiful Asian girl that I do not know gets into the taxi with me. We're both headed the same way. They call it sharing a taxi, okay? <laughs> and this girl lays the back of her head right into my lap. And I'm thinking, fuck yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> New York's got these beautiful free Asian girls with every taxi ride. <laughs> this is a marvelous accoutrement to the city, you know. <laughs> Uber, no thank you. Taxi, you have won me back. <laughs> so this girl's just laying in my lap and she just starts ruminating about her evening, you know. She said, she said she had a nice evening but that her boyfriend wasn't in town, that he's never in town. Then she goes, what happens in taxis stays in taxis. (laughs) And I'm not the brightest, you know, bowl in the bowl drawer, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Fuck, dude. You ever wander into a sentence, you're like, oh my God, I feel like he forgot what he wanted to say on that. I know. He's like, bowl in the bowl jar. <laughs> oh, that was funny. But I'm looking around this vehicle after she says that, and I'm thinking, this is a taxi, you know? <laughs> I mean, taxi me once, shame on me. So I'm feeling kind of cavalier after her statements, right? I go down to make a kiss, you know? This young lady's laying in my lap. I go down to make a kiss. Now, trying to kiss somebody that's laying in your lap. (laughs) That's a beautiful idea. (laughs) Until you get right here, okay? (laughs) And then you're just milling around like a lip rapist, bro. I don't think James Bond could kiss a woman laying in his lap, okay? So she pushed me off of her. Um, she called me a creep. She called me a, she called me a pervert. Um, not a pervert. Definitely not a, a creep. <laughs> and then it was awkward for a few blocks until she got dropped off wherever she was going. Uh, I'm not sure even where it was. I think it was like a halfway house for complete cunts or something. <laughs> And at that point, it's just me and the driver, you know? And, and I thought he said drugs. He, he could have said something else. English wasn't his first language, you know? He was bilingual. 
But I heard drugs in my head, you know? And so I said, cocaine! <laughs> like I was coaxed for Columbus, bruh. And we just landed on crack rock, you know? <laughs> and I heard him accelerate that vehicle. And that's universal language for we're gonna get some cocaine. <laughs> Cause that's a drug to me, you know? Weed, weed is a confusing spice. <laughs> I mean, weed will make you forget how to get home. Cocaine will make you forget how to get to heaven. <laughs> so we just drove, man. Man, we just drove, man. And uh, we drove for about a half hour into like North Harlem. Uh, if that's even a place, I don't even know. <laughs> um, but it was a dark neighborhood. Uh, and that's not a euphemism. <laughs> All the street lights were busted out. So you couldn't tell that it was predominantly black. <laughs> But I grew up in a black neighborhood. I know when I'm back, you know? <laughs> and we got there, man, and I gave this dude some money. He gets out of the vehicle, comes back a few minutes later with some cocaine on him, you know? But he sits in the back seat next to me. <laughs> a little alarming, you know? <laughs> kind of like when you're in the air on a plane and you see the pilot taking a piss and you're like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Is this spirit? <laughs> spirit. But this beautiful gentleman scooped up a little bit of cocaine on a car key, put it under my nose, <laughs> killed that baby, bruh. Then I scooped him one, and he killed his, man. And then, and, 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 just, just a couple of dueling cocainists. <laughs> and we got high, man. Uh, we got high for about 40 minutes. Dude, I, re I remember being so high at one point, I was like, dude, where the fuck is the driver, bruh? <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't know. <laughs> so we sat there, man. We continued to get high together, me and this beautiful gentleman. And he said, Luigi, that was his name, Luigi. And I thought that was Spanish, you know, uh, like that rare Italian Spanish. <laughs> so I start saying my name in Spanish, Teodoro. Because I learned Spanish in Louisiana. And my whole life, I thought Teodoro was Spanish for Theodore, which is my first name. About six months ago, this girl goes, that means I adore you. <laughs> Wish you would have told me at some other point, you know? Because it's fine, right? It's fine to tell people you adore them when you meet them. But when you're an hour deep into an eight ball, <laughs> With a man who keeps saying he's Luigi and you just keep saying, I adore you to him. 99% of the time, this don't end heterosexual. <laughs> so, uh, this is a long night, man. Uh, so how are you feeling about this story so this far, Sam? Funny. I can't believe we're 10 I, minutes into this already. I'm just so engaged with this I one. know. I feel like this might be my favorite one from him so far. Really? Yeah. I feel like he's doing a... Like, I feel like a lot of the other ones we've done have been more interviews or just like kind of conversational, mm -hmm. not like him sitting doing like a stand-up. Well, this is our first stand-up that we've yeah. seen from him, right? So I feel like I like this a lot. Well, we were saying that in the last couple of videos that yeah. we've done, we didn't know if he did stand up. Yeah. So that's why we wanted to search out and find a stand-up one. But yeah. like you said, I think this is our first look into how he I mean he's done some storytelling but yeah. he's going through a full bit I mean we've seen so yes. many clips it's been spliced together yes. so now we're getting to see the full Theo you know in in his element of, and it's like he's storytelling but he's building throughout it which I yes. like yes yeah, yeah. I, I really like you know the way he's using his inflections and focusing on certain points within the story to highlight it from the comedic standpoint from yeah. the performance standpoint yes. he's doing that really really well yeah. and this is just generally hilarious yeah like, no no I'm dying I love this so far <laughs> Like I and I can totally picture Theodora. him doing this. The uh, Theodore, I adore you. <laughs> but the thing is, too, like it, I don't think it would work as well if it wasn't him. You know oh, what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, no, it only works because it's him. Yeah, and again, we said in I the beginning. I can visualize the entire thing in my head. Well, that's what I'm saying. But we said in the beginning he tells these stories and you don't know if they're true yeah. or if he's BSing. Yeah. But the thing about this is, you can picture him in yeah, this I situation. Yeah, I feel like this is probably true. <laughs> Even if it isn't true, it or doesn't like, matter because you can still picture him yeah. doing it, right? Or like loosely lied with the truth with some embellishing. Yeah. 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 I like if whether you're saying Theodore or not. <laughs> Are you ready to continue? Yes. 
This is a long night, man. Uh, so he starts saying, I got a gift for you. I got a gift. And I grew up in like a broken neighborhood. You know, I thought it was going to be his cock. You know? <laughs> so I start practicing my like, see a cock, like don't be interested faces. You know? like, So I'm running through the Rolodex of no cock for me faces. <laughs> and, uh, and then he keeps saying, I got a gif, a gif. I got a gif for you. Then I'm thinking it's like a thing on his phone, you know, like a GIF. <laughs> a gif, that's know? what I was thinking. Like a, like a disappointed walrus, you know, like Monday, Monday, <laughs> Monday, Monday, Monday. <laughs> but then I hear on the taxi door. And I'm like, who knocks on a car door, dude? Police officer. Come in or just be out there, you know? <laughs> Were you raised in a house of car doors in it? So I'm like, come in. Because now I got to live in this shit universe they created by knocking. And a toot gets in. A prostitute, you know? Uh, a toot. <laughs> a toot. You can't say pros. Pros is somebody that uh, have a prosthetic, you know? <laughs> and a toot get mad if you call them a pros, if, uh, if they got everything, you know? If they got everything. <laughs> so I'm being politically correct, and I'm saying this too, you know? And I respect prostitutes. I respect all women, you know? Whether they're a president or a prostitute, I respect them, man. Uh, you know, prostitute, probably a tougher job, let's be honest, these days, dude. <laughs> you out there, middle of the night. Slang in that canal, you know? <laughs> a lot of men canal. are gay. Market shares decline. So I respect prostitutes, man. But I don't want to deal with a prostitute tonight. I just want to do cocaine with my adorable buddy, Louis. <laughs> you know? And this prostitute, man, she had like a... You know, she had a wig that covered... You could see about 60% of her face, okay? And to me, it looked like a man's face, right? Which is fine, you know? Um... No judgment there. I'm just saying, if I were on a game show called Guess 60% of This versus His Face, <laughs> I would guess man first. You know? <laughs> but so we're all, uh, we're all back there getting high together, and this prostitute starts making advances towards me. And I don't want a prostitute. So I start feeling uncomfortable, which is where I live at most of the time, so it only took me about half a lung to get there, you know? So I get out of the taxi into the street in North Harlem, right? Luigi comes out after me, because that's new friendship. And he's like, hundred dollars, hundred dollars, hundred dollars. So I give him a hundred bucks. I'm thinking he's gonna pay this toot. She'll go on about her business. We'll get back to, you know, uh, you know, friendship. <laughs> I look over a minute later, they're kissing on each other's necks, okay? He's investing my hundred back here with this prostitute. <laughs> I still have a $240 meter on the front of this taxi, right? So I'm out 360, not even in the vehicle, unfair. <laughs> But I deal with my negative feelings outside of the car so I don't bring negative energy back into the vehicle, right? <laughs> <laughs> then I get back into the taxi. But now I'm sitting in the front passenger seat, right? You can hear Luigi and the toot in the back. Um, so you can hear the light rustlings of a blowjob, you know, kind of just, just simmering up into existence. <laughs> a good blowjob, too. It sounds like, you know, one you see on the internet. You know? <laughs> sound like somebody's at a water park. And I respect what they're doing, man. <laughs> but I still want to do cocaine by myself, right? <laughs> so now I'm trying to be considerate and quietly do cocaine by myself, right? <laughs> just the softest little cokehead you ever met, dude. Just like, a, just like a newborn rabbit just hopping upon a gram, you know? At one point, I was leaning my head back and just quietly dumping cocaine into the bottom of my nose. It was awesome, bro. Luigi's in the back, dude. He's at the water park, bro. He got that all-day wristband, dude. He don't give a fuck about me. He goes, you drive, you drive. And this is when I knew I had a problem, man. Not specifically with drugs and alcohol, but with the way that I behave when I'm on drugs and alcohol. When I moved over into the driver's seat, 
of this taxi, right? Put on my seatbelt. I remember asking them to put their seatbelt on. <laughs> but they don't even make a seatbelt for all that activity, you know? We need seatbelt reform. I've been saying this. And I started... I'm so invested in this story. I know. I'm like, what's going to happen next? I'm hoping it's going to finish and it's not like a two part series or something. But I'm realizing that Daryl Strawberry, I mean, I'm assuming that he's referring to the drugs in in that instance because we haven't heard a word about Daryl Strawberry Strawberry. at all. Unless, like, the guy's name is actually Daryl Strawberry at the end of it, that he's going to drop a name. But I'm like, because that's what I was thinking about. I'm like, what does Daryl Strawberry have to do with it? Other than the fact that Daryl Strawberry, I think he did cocaine. But oh, okay. Maybe that's what he's referring to. Anyways, I was just saying, like, I'm so invested in this and I need to know how it finishes. So I'm hoping. That we're gonna finish it. I was also wondering, like, I was like, what's going on with this Daryl Strawberry thing? Yeah, but I don't know what his deal is with pronouncing words, though. <laughs> he's got, he's, he says, like, every, I don't know, like, fifth sentence, there's a word in it that he just decides to pronounce differently. differently? I know. Differently. <laughs> but I wonder, like, I wonder if that is just, like, from where he. He no, some, you think he he's on purpose? just messing around. True. Yeah, for sure. Anyways, let's see if we get the ending of the story. What do you think is going to happen? I think he's going to get arrested, and that's why he had to go sober. You think so? I think so. No? He, maybe he has to go to rehab? I think he... No, I don't know. You think I, he decided on his own? I, I think... There's, I think something happened, but I don't know if he got arrested. I, I don't know. We'll see. I think he All may. Right. I think there's a good possibility of that, but I get the feeling that he just kind of, he did so much messed up stuff that night that he decided that he had to get sober. Yeah, maybe. We're let's find let's find out. out. We need seatbelt reform. I've been saying this, <laughs> and I started this vehicle and I drove us off into North Harlem, man, at four fifteen in the morning, just driving. Drove for probably about 20 minutes. Didn't know where I was, you know? My brain's like, damn, dude, you're lost. (laughs) It's 4.30 in the morning, man. You're high on cocaine. (laughs) But at least you're working. (laughs) (laughs) At least you're out here making money for your family, okay? I don't have a family, dude. More importantly, I don't drive taxi, bro. But then my brain also goes, but man, you don't have a commercial driver's license. As if that was gonna be an issue when the cops stopped us. <laughs> There's empty cocaine bags everywhere, right? Like, look like I've been washing my face with powdered donuts. <laughs> the sex crimes in the back seat, potentially gay sex crimes in the back seat. And that officer's just gonna be like, that's all for naught, young soldier. You don't have a chauffeur certificate. (laughs) (laughs) But that's what got me to pull over, man. I pulled over, I left a couple hundred dollars on that car seat. I started walking off, man. I walked about three blocks, got into a regular taxi, right? (laughs) I, I even made him pop the trunk just to make sure that spare tire wasn't shooting up in the back, you know? I get to my hotel, it's 5.30 in the morning, and in one hour, I gotta be on the nationally syndicated radio program, the Opie and Jim Norton radio show, two men that I really admire. (laughs) So I finished doing my cocaine. (laughs) Cause you can't not finish your cocaine, dude. Try to not finish your cocaine. (laughs) I will watch you try. What do they put in it? Cigarettes? (laughs) I took three showers in 10 minutes, son. (laughs) And dried off after each one, bro. You don't know me. (laughs) Then I start walking to the radio station, right? It's five blocks uh, to the Sirius building. Halfway there, I realize that I have on jeans with sweatpants over them. something I've never worn before because nobody's ever worn it. I'm the Neil Armstrong of pants this morning. I get up to the radio station. They tell me I got to be in the air for three hours. There's a million listeners, right? I can't feel my face with either hand. Highest I can feel my neck. Running on neck thoughts. 
And the other guest for the day is Daryl Strawberry. Yeah. Who's in the Hall of Fame? He's a Hall of Fame baseball player, and he's in the Hall of Fame for cocaine. <laughs> what an eight ball as beautiful man couldn't hit, right? And bless his heart, man, he's 13 years sober, and he's eloquent and successful and well put together. And he was some of these ideas that I, maybe I envision myself as, but this morning I'm showing up, you know, nothing like that, you know? Um, so it just made me think, like, dude, you got to tighten up, you know? Uh, and I'll say this, too, about Daryl Strawberry, man. I have big nostrils. Daryl Strawberry got the biggest nostrils you've ever seen. I'm not saying it to shame him. It's not an ethnic thing. This man got dead stars at the bottom of his nose, okay? And I just say it so that you understand he didn't stand up. Did a- you get that reference? Stars? Dead stars. It's no. a black hole. Oh. <laughs> He's got black holes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, there's only like 30 seconds left, so let's, oh let's see what God. he says. <laughs> Daryl Strawberry got the biggest nostrils you've ever seen. I'm not saying it to shame him. It's not an ethnic thing. This man got dead stars at the bottom of his <laughs> nose, okay? And I just say it so that you understand he didn't stand a chance against a fine powder. <laughs> this beautiful man could kill a spice rack from 70 feet away, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Take that nutmeg. <laughs> what you looking at, coriander? But on this day, he was everything I needed to see, you know? Uh, so, yeah, so that's when I got sober, and now I've been sober for 11 months. Uh, and I'm Theo Vaughn. Thank you for having me. You guys be good. <laughs> so, Daryl Strawberry did make an appearance yes, at the did. end of the video. He, the had, very a, he had some relevance. Yeah. Oh, he was his inspiration for going sober. Yeah, um, like I said, I don't know if he still is, but um, that was a wild story, to yeah. say the least. I'd be very curious to know if that is, in fact, true. I don't think he would ever. I don't think he would ever tell you whether it was true or not, unless Fair. you were like a good friend of his. Then yeah. he might tell you. He might say, "Yeah, there was some things in there that I boasted a little bit. I, yeah, boosted up a little bit. Yeah. But I like I said, I wouldn't put it past him." He just seems like a wild guy. Oh, yeah. He definitely seems like a wild guy. But he seems wild. Like, I mean, I guess that's also because he seems wild without the without drugs. Yeah. So with drugs I or alcohol, imagine. I can imagine that he's pretty wild. But, I mean, that we've even did, did um, what is it, Burt Kreischer? The um, Machine. The Machine. The Machine. Right? Another comedian that he likes to party. Me a lot and, of him. Well, not the style, but. No, no, no. Just like the experiences. That, that you know, same conversation and stuff yeah. that, you know, obviously going to Russia and doing all that wild stuff. Anyways, experiences. We've done that clearly. So if you want to check yeah. that out, uh, but I enjoyed this one. This was, this was great. I was laughing all the way through. It's hilarious. Yeah, no. And I feel like, I mean, maybe I'm just naive, but I feel like you have to have experienced something along the lines of that to ha- even come up with story to begin with. I feel like it's hard to just like randomly make all of that up. Like my brain wouldn't even be able to put all that together. Yeah, I guess that's fair. That's a f- I mean, it could be somebody that you know that did it though. True, too, that's fair. Right. Yeah. Inspiration or, from somebody else. Yeah. Somebody told you, a story about it, or you read it in a book or something like that yeah. and then you kind of elaborated on it a bit more but anyways yeah. did you like it i did yeah, yeah i was dying i'd say that's probably my favorite one we've done by him so far yeah it was great it was great stand-up yeah. so i'd like to see more stand-up would you say that's from your him favorite now. from him yeah 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 i would say so yeah, I, I want to do more stand-up too for sure so if you have a recommendation for stand-up let us know we just you know caught this on a whim we we you know like i said hadn't seen a lot of theo vaughn stand-up prior to this so let us know in those comments guys uh make sure you hit the like button before you go if you want to subscribe this is your first time make sure you do that now make sure you hit the notification bell as well we drop comedy music yep. sports and history so this is a place to be if you want new content yes all right that's it from us today we'll be back tomorrow see you guys in the next one